All right, we're going to look now again at the unit circle and how we can find coordinates of points on it. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at how you can use special triangles, triangles you've seen before, related to angles that are common, uh, can be used to find coordinates of points. And then we're also going to look at how we can find coordinates of points for quadrant angles. And we'll talk more about that after. The first thing, special triangles, you've likely seen before. These two special triangles are something that you get from pretty standard geometric shapes. This first one here is half of a square. It's diagonally half a square. If you imagine a square like this, I'll roughly draw a square, and you cut it diagonally, then it is that triangle. And you know that you have a 45 degree angle in there because that's 90, and when you cut it in half, it's 45. So that's 45 degrees. We'll look at the other special triangle in a second here, but let's first uh, move it down a bit here. The important thing to look at here is the ratio of the sides. If the side of this is 1, the side of the original square, and then you have the diagonal here, the diagonal is square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared using the Pythagorean relation, you get square root of 2. So you have a triangle that is 1, 1, and root 2 as the ratio of the sides. All right, so that's commonly referred to as a 1, 1, root 2 triangle when you refer to the ratio of the sides, or sometimes people call it a 45, 45, 90 triangle if you're referring to the angles. Or sometimes if we're going to refer to radians, we could call it pi over 4, pi over 4, pi over 2 triangle. Whatever you call it, the connection that needs to be made there is between the angles and the ratio of the sides. Now the other one, this one right here, that doesn't come from half of a square or half of a rectangle. It actually comes from half of an equilateral triangle. If we imagine this all the way over to here, and if that original thing was two units, and this was two units, because equilateral, all the angles are, or all the sides are two, and all the angles are 60 in that original triangle, 60 degrees, or pi over 3. If I take half of it, then I get that's 90 there. And then this angle up here is 30 degrees, because it's half. I cut it in half, or in radians, pi over 6. So working from the dimensions we have there, I cut this in half. This would be a 1, right? So I have these two sides, and then I just need this third side here to know the ratio of sides. Using the Pythagorean relation, well, I can uh, write it up here. I need to think square root of 2 squared minus 1 squared, because I'm finding one of the short sides, so it's root 3. That side there is square root of 3. So that triangle is called, well, I call it a 1 root 3 2 triangle, even though a lot of people call it a 1 2 root 3 triangle. It's important to realize that root 3 is not the hypotenuse. People mistakenly put it in the hypotenuse. Root 3 is about 1.73. And 2 is obviously bigger than 1.73. So make sure you label it right when you use it. This is also called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Or in radians, a pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2 triangle. Right, so we're going to use those to work with uh, work within the unit circle and uh, find coordinates of points. All right, so let's look at applying that now. Okay, we're going to look for some coordinates uh, if you're given an angle. There's a number of angles here to look at. The first three of these angles, we're going to use some special triangles because we've got denominators here. We have angles that are related to the angles that are in those special triangles, right? All of these ones in standard position are related to those three, right? Something related to pi over 6, something related to pi over 4, and something related to pi over 3. So we can use those special triangles in terms of reference angles, reference triangles. However, the last two here, these are not angles that involve those special triangles. So we're going to look at those a little bit differently and just use the unit circle and our understanding of it. All right, so let's have a look at the first one here. We're looking for, if you haven't read the question here, if each of those angles are drawn in standard position, what are the coordinates of the point of intersection uh, where the unit circle and the terminal arm 
across each other. All right, so let's look at the first one here, seven pi over six. Get our grid back there. And just to note here, our scale on this grid here, this grid is set up so that this is the unit circle, so two squares are one, or each square is a half. So if I go about drawing my angle in standard position here, my initial arm is over here, and seven pi over six gets me halfway around because that's six pi over six and a little bit further here. This arm is going to be about right here, roughly speaking, something like that. Now, how we're going to find the coordinates of this point right here, that point right there, is we're going to use one of those special triangles. So we'll draw it right now. So I'll draw it over here. I'm going to draw it in such a way that we're going to be able to put it in our drawing properly. And we need our hypotenuse there. So I drew it that way with the long side horizontally and down because I'm going to be able to grab this now. Actually, before we put this in here, let's, let's get rid of our terminal arm because it's going to overlap here. And we'll use this triangle. We'll grab this and we'll move this in here. Now we're going to use that hypotenuse as that terminal arm for our angle going around to there. The reason we're going to do that is because now we know the ratios in that triangle and we can use those to come up with the ratios and the coordinates of this point here. This is still the point we're looking for, the intersection point there. We know that the ratios of that triangle are, I'll write it over here, this is a 1, this is a 2, and this up here, that one in there is root 3. Now that doesn't help us because those are the distances, you know, say for this point out here. But what we can do is we can shrink this thing down to fit. We know that this is a unit circle, which means it's a circle of radius 1. And we know that this line right here is 2. So we can divide all those values in half and then use that to come up with the coordinates of our point. So visually, if you shrink this thing down in here now, you've just cut it in half. And it fits exactly right there. You went from a hypotenuse of 2 and you cut that in half right because you made it into 1 so instead now it's 2 divided by 2 or just 1 right the other side you divide them all because you've shrunk the whole thing down but it still has that same ratio right this is gonna be a half this is gonna be root 3 over 2 again instead of the triangle being 1 root 3 2 you've divided every single thing by 2 here so instead you're calling it a 1 half root 3 over 2, 2 over 2, or in other words, 1 half root 3 over 2, 1 triangle. All right, because the 1, that hypotenuse puts it in the unit circle. And then you can just read the coordinates of the point, right? Because this thing is what's going to be on this side right here. This root 3 over 2 is going to be what's on this side over here. Let's get rid of our angle for a second because it's a little bit in the way. Now, the only other thing we have to think about is this is to the left and this is down. So the sign here, this is going to be negative, this is going to be negative. So in, in the end here, the coordinates of our point, the coordinates of that point are using that special triangle. And our angle are negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 over 2. You shrink the special triangle down, make it whatever ratio you need. All right, let's do another one here. This is this uh, 3 pi over 4, and we'll fit it onto our circle there. We're going to need our uh, special triangle that has pi over 4 in it, right? Because it's related to pi over 4. So our special triangle related to pi over 4, that, that uh, 1, 1, root 2 triangle. So we'll draw the triangle so that it can be in quadrant 2, because 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. So we have the beginning of it. Then I need that hypotenuse there. So there's our special triangle. We'll grab that and we will move it into position here. So this is going to be where our angle is there. Pretty close to the right spot there. So that triangle, this is our angle here from there around to there. All right, 3 pi over 4. The triangle, again, in this situation is bigger than the unit circle because this side is 1, this side is 1, and let's get rid of our angle there so we don't confuse the issue. And this side 
is root 2 for that triangle. But we can squish it down to fit into the unit circle and adjust the, the dimensions, right? So it's 1, 1, root 2. But we're going to change that. And we're going to make it into something that fits here, right? So if we shrink this down, we'll grab a hold of that triangle. We shrink it down to there. What we need to do with those dimensions is divide them each by the hypotenuse, root 2, because we want that hypotenuse to be 1, right? So if I divide this by root 2, divide this by root 2, and divide this by root 2, that makes that hypotenuse into 1, which is what I want, right? Divide all these by root 2. So you have a 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 triangle, right? So those are the dimensions. So that means that's the coordinates of our point there, right? just have to think about the the sign of them so that point has coordinates the x value is going to be negative because I'm going this way right so this is going to be negative 1 over root 2 but the y coordinate is going up so it's going to be positive so I'm going to have negative 1 over root 2 1 over root 2 okay it's the same it's 45 degrees you expect the x and the y to be numerically the same it's just the sign is different one's negative one's positive now I'm going to rewrite these over here and just for a second think about another way you might see them written. Sometimes people don't like a square root in the denominator. So instead what you might find is that someone has multiplied by root 2 over root 2. In other words, let's say if I times this by root 2 over root 2, each of them, I'm not changing their value. If I times them by root 2 over root 2, not changing the value, it's just that what I'm going to get here is I'm going to get negative square root of 2 over 2 because on the bottom root 2 times root 2 root 2 over 2 this is the same value as what I had before there right doesn't matter which way you write it as long as you realize they're the same whether you have 1 over root 2 or square root of 2 over 2 they're the same value all right one's just rationalized as it's called okay let's look at one more here this is this 5 pi over 3 this is an angle that's going to be in quadrant 4, right? If I was drawing this, it's going to be all the way around to, over to here somewhere, something like that. But we'll use our triangle to draw our terminal arm there. Now, when I draw it this time, I'm going to draw it so that the longer way, the root 3 way, is up and down, all right? So what I mean by that is I need to draw it like this and then down about what I think square root of 3 is, roughly that. If uh, two squares are 1, then that's about right. Then I need my hypotenuse. There we go. Grab a hold of this thing and put it on the picture. So we've got our little reference triangle in there. Now, if we're going to try and use this again, this is 2. We don't want that. We want it to be 1, so we're going to shrink it down to fit. All right. Now, let's just redraw the original one there to compare with. There's that. We need our hypotenuse. All right, now, our sides then, the sides were 1 root 3, and that's negative because it's down, and 2, but we shrunk it down now, we cut it all in half, so we have 1 half in here, negative root 3 over 2, and 1, right? Again, 1 root 3, 2, divide them all by 2, and you get, that gives you that 1, that unit circle and then you can just read the other two right the coordinates of the other two those two okay easy so then your coordinates of that point where it intersects are one half and negative root three over two exact values right so there's how you can use those special triangles to find coordinates of points on the unit circle without using your calculator. For those angles that come up that are uh, related to pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 4. We're going to look now at the other, the last two angles we had up there. Now they are going to be two that we're not going to use the special triangles. They're actually even easier as long as you understand this unit circle here. Now I need to change my grid because this was drawn with the other grid. Let's do that. There we go. So this now we have one square you know, one space on the grid is one, so this is all one here. This is a unit circle. If you want to know now where the terminal arm intersects the unit circle with an angle like 3 pi over 2, 
well, we need to think about what this is because if this is my initial arm here and I rotate around to here, that's 3 pi over 2. So if my terminal arm is right there, well, my intersection point is right on a point. I can just read off the, off the picture there, right? This is my intersection point. So its coordinates are pretty straightforward. X is 0, Y is negative 1, all right? These are called quadrant angles. A quadrant angle is one that ends on one of the axes. When you have quadrant angles, you can just use those ones. It's going to be 1 or 0 or negative 1 in the coordinates of the point. Second one over here, this negative pi. Well, there's the initial arm. We're going backwards, pi. And there's our terminal arm over here. Well, our intersection point is right here. What's that going to be? That intersection point is going to be negative 1, 0, right? Because it's on that axis there. All right. So sometimes you don't even need to use special triangles to come up with those coordinates of those points. You can just get them by understanding what the unit circle is, that circle of radius 1. All right. So that's a look at using special triangles and just the basics of the unit circle to come up with points without using a calculator. All right.